o'clock, and I'd like to call this meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals to order. We have several cases tonight, uh, but uh, we are going to take one case out of order, which happens to be 101 Willow Street. This is the first time this case has been on the docket, so I will read the legal notice. Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing in the Select Board's meeting room at Town Hall, 16 Wall Street, Reading, Massachusetts, on Wednesday, October 16, 2019, at 7 p.m. on the application of Citizens Environmental League, pursuant to Reading Zoning Bylaw Section 4.6.10, to appeal the Community Planning and Development Commission Site Plan Review Decision of Approval to redevelop and convert the existing lower sports field area into one synthetic turf, multi-purpose field on the property located at 101 Willow Street in Reading, Massachusetts. I will, unless there's an objection, I will dispense with the reading of the abutters list, other than to say they were all notified, as well as the select board, the police department, the building department, health department, engineering division, town clerk, fire department, conservation commission, assessor's office, CPDC, and members and associate members of the Zoning Board of Appeals, as well as the planning boards of Wakefield, Linfield, North Reading, Stoneham, Woburn, and Wilmington. If anyone here this evening wishes to speak on this case, testimony is given to this board under oath. So if you plan to speak, you should please rise now and raise your right hand. Doesn't hurt to do it. You don't speak. Okay, yeah. Maybe All rise. <laughs> All rise, yeah. I swear that the testimony given by, by me before this board will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Responses, I do. I do. Thank you, Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, uh, at this point, uh, I, I know what this is about, and I'm going to recuse myself from this particular case in that I am very good friends with one of the uh, direct abutters to the project and I have uh, been hearing some things there and anyway just to, just to clear any uh, 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 cloud of uh, impartiality or whatever I think it's best that if, if I recuse myself I, okay. I've known this person for 25 plus years worked with them uh, I used to work with him and, uh, before I retired, and uh, actually I've been over his house within the past month. So. Well, are we okay? Are we to sit outside? And I will do that. Wave the hand to you. We'll move on. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sounds good. All right. That means this evening on this case we'll have four voting members on this case. Just a little background on this thing. Uh, before, before you go on with step further. And does everybody understand the significance of four voting members? Could be a tie. Could be a tie. That means that four out of four have to agree on one dis one direction. It's just an appeal of a of a hearing uh, of a decision. It's not a special so, permit hearing. It's okay. just an appeal of the site plan review. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just a little background on this thing very quickly, because we have a very busy schedule tonight, and we want to move these things, these things as fast as we can, and uh, but give them the attention they deserve. This is an appeal of a CBDC site plan review decision that was dated August 12th. And there's a letter that was received dated August 27th by the appellate Citizens Environmental League signed by Louise Hillman. This hearing was set on September 19th at, at this date, at the request of the appellant. And the appellant was notifying the town. She notified the town on October 11th that she could not meet the date. And asking for a continuance to a date at this moment is unknown. We don't know what it would be. Although we did get a little clarification just before I got to the meeting, and I'll mention that. The town has had a lot of difficulty contacting the appellant uh, did make conversation and contact within the last 24 hours. And I'll read that into the record in a moment. <clears throat> the ZBA action tonight is to decide whether, number one, to continue this case or not. 
And uh, based on that decision, we then will be faced with acting on the appeal of the appellant and make a decision on that. And it's obvious that there's a fair amount of interest associated with this, this case tonight. I'll read into the record at the moment. We received two, co there's been a couple of communications uh, in the last 24 hours, in fact, in the last 12 hours. Uh, one of them is from the appellate, which says, I did receive your emails. Uh, as mentioned, I will be unable to attend this evening due to my ongoing family crisis and an inability to prepare. Two additional weeks would be all that is needed. And Andrew sent back a communication which said your request for a continuance will be taken up at the CBA meeting tonight. But there is no guarantee that it will be granted. And if it's not granted, the appeal will be discussed as advertised. Is the appellant here tonight? I have to ask that question, see if it's yes or no. And obviously, she's not. Okay. Uh, we're going to take up the issue of the continuance first and I would like to get input from the board members we do have legal counsel here from the town as well and uh, and uh, we have the, the planner here from the town as well and I think we have the defendant here as well is Brad around where's Brad I don't know. Chris oh okay he was here, I didn't... Yeah, no, he's on another case. Yes, <laughs> yes sir. Okay, thank you. All right. So we'd like to hear from all those folks, and I think I would like to start by hearing from Attorney Latham first. Okay? The issue here is granting of a continuance or not, and I'd like to restrict that conversation to that issue and not getting into the details of the case if you don't have to. Yes, sir. Um, for the record, I am going to have to make some comments in regards to the jurisdictional issues that we think are essential, okay. an essential element of this entire issue. So with that being said, Chris Latham for Austin Preparatories. Would you like me to wait a I think we'd like to do that. We're talking about continuance now. Yes, sir. It, the continuance, however, it, it, the jurisdictional aspect to it is essential to this because it goes to the very fact that my client is suffering hardship as a result of this particular appellant and their dilatory behavior. Latham, I would like to explain, uh, by the way, my name is Donna Brewer, I'm with the Town Council's office, and I, please excuse me, I have a cold. Um, the issue of the hardship and having a continuance for two more weeks is absolutely relevant to the board's decision about whether or not to grant the continuance, but the issue of her standing to bring the claim is something that would be left to the substance of the matter if they decide to grant the continuance. Um, all right, so Chris Latham for Austin Preparatory School. I'm accompanied by Dr. Uh, James Hickey, Mr. John Weber, Jonathan Pollard of Austin Prep, as well as landscape architect uh, Chris Huntress, professional engineer, Mr. John Barrows, and natural resource economist, Ms. Evan uh, Guderin. Um, while we speak tonight and present arguments and evidence on behalf of Austin Prep, we know for the record that the school reserves all its rights and remedies and privileges, none of which are, are waived. Please note that the burden of proof is on the alleged appellant, Ms. Hillman, to prove her claims are plausible with direct facts, not by speculative personal opinions. The CPDC and Austin Preparatory School have no burden of proof. With that said, Austin Preparatory School is a nonprofit educational and religious institution. Austin Prep has been educating students for over 56 years at its campus at 101 Willow Street. As an educational and religious organization, the school is entitled to legal protections of the Dover Amendment afforded in the Zoning Act. With all due respect um, to this board, 
We object in the most strenuous terms to a continuance of tonight's scheduled hearing on this alleged appeal because the alleged appeal <coughs> is by all appearances acting dilatory. The appellant's objective appears to be delay and frustrate the process in the hope that Austin Prep's donors will fade away and that the passage of time will prevent the construction and thus prevent the use of the improved field for the, for the next uh, school year. Please recall that when the appellant filed her alleged, alleged appeal, she explicitly requested that the board not hear this matter sooner than the first week of October. The town accommodated the appellant's request and scheduled tonight's hearing. The town has thus already accommodated the appellant's request as to scheduling. Now, on a long weekend with town hall closed, within hours of the scheduled hearing, at least 41 days after the alleged appeal was filed, the appellant sends a late email requesting a continuance. Notice of this hearing was sent to the appellant weeks ago. I would say probably around September 19th, if not earlier, and the, pub the public notice was published for the last several weeks. Numerous citizens of Reading are now here tonight in attendance. Please note that this appellant did not attend any of the three hearings, CPD hearings that occurred over three separate calendar months, and that she did not submit any correspondence or communications to CPDC during the entire hearing process. The appellant, who is not a party in interest, is engaging in this delay tactic because the appellant benefits from delay and will not suffer any legally appreciable loss of her rights or injury from this project. Meanwhile, Austin Preparatory School, a real party in interest, has had its rights violated and is continuing to incur real injury and damages. To allow such behavior by someone who is not an interested party is inequitable, allows innocent parties to be injured, and sets a dangerous precedence for this board and the town. It is patently unfair and a violation of, of my client's rights to due process to allow this appeal to, to survive and to drag on. There can be no doubt that fairness and equity demand for Austin Prep and the citizens of Reading that the alleged appeal be heard tonight and not continue. Central to our position in these regards is our firm belief that this alleged appeal is not legitimate. I'd like to turn to the members of the board for comments from them relative to continuance of this case based on the information we have received. Uh, I'll start with you, Dave. Uh, I really want to save most of my comments to hear what the public has to say, but um, you know, if this applicant is well within their time frame, time frame to appeal, then I can't, you know, I don't know what this person's intent, this she that you refer to, I don't know what her intentions are. <laughs> But I don't think that's really a matter of substance. Um, they seem to be within the time frames of appeal, so I'm just going to reserve the rest of my comments until I hear what everyone else has to say. John. <coughs> the board has, in its years um, that I'm aware of, never turned down requests for continuance. However, every time the board granted a continuance for whatever the period of time, there was justification for that, and that was clearly spelled out um, in the motion that was made uh, by any member of the board and then voted upon. This is the first time I've heard a situation where an individual appellant coming before asking for a reversal of a previous decision um, does so, it appears from what uh, Chris, is just, Chris Latham has just said that the person questions the status of that individual and what the justification is. Um, so I, like Nick, would like to hear a little bit more about uh, the justifications of, and since the appellant is not here and did not put anything in writing um, other than the issues that she had with uh, the decision of the CPDC, I'd like to hear more about that before we move on the continuance, but I have a, a difficult time addressing status if, if the person um, has not offered anything in terms of um, data or justification for uh, what's coming forth and not being here, and then asking for a continuance. I didn't like the situation that you read off in the emails that we've had in the past 24 to 48 hours. 
Um, but I, I do reserve making the decision on the continuance until we've heard a little bit more information. Hillary. Um, I would also like to reserve my comments. Um, I'm a little unclear as to how the process will work <laughs> So, um, with the appellate situation. Well, my position on this thing is, I think, becoming very clear. Uh, the thing that concerns me most hear you in the back at all is the appellant, who it is, why they have not participated in this CPDC hearing, and why we're having a great deal of trouble getting them to respond to this board with regard to this continuance. Okay? I don't even know if this person or organization have any bearing or connection with Reading, Massachusetts. I don't even know if they're residents. Uh, but if, you're, if someone is serious about appealing a decision, like this, they should be on top of it and participating to the fullest, and, and they're not doing it. And based upon their past performance of responsiveness, they say, all I need is two more weeks, and, and frankly, I'm sitting here and I don't believe it. I'm having trouble believing it, that this may just, I don't know what it is, but I, I, I have the feeling that this is not a sincere appeal to the facts. All we have is a letter in response to the decision. A letter. And if I sit there and study the letter, and I have, it basically lists literally every single piece of the decision that was made to support the decision. <coughs> And uh, I think, and, and this is just my board, single board opinion, member opinion, that what we're going to get is no more than what we have. I have my sense is that that person will come in here at some point, whether it's two weeks from now or whenever, and they're going to just reiterate put a presentation around the letter they made. So I'm having trouble. We usually do grant continuances. We really do. And uh, we've gotten to the point now where continuances are becoming a way of life. And uh, so I, I, I'm sitting here reluctant. I'd like to hear more information too, but I'm sitting here reluctant. I'm going to open it up to the public, Charlie. Could, before, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, could we get some information from our planner? Because I know that our planner has been. Sure, I was going to go ask. Oh, okay. I, ask for that. I thought you opened up the public. No, after mm -hmm. him first. <laughs> so I'm, I'm kind of reluctant to keep this case going. Okay? But I'd like to. Andrew, you have some comment to this thing? Um, I can only really add that a site plan review application was filed on May 8th, and after multiple hearings throughout the summer, as you noted, the decision of the site plan approval was dated August 12th and filed with the town clerk on August 13th. Um, the defendant also went through conservation commission and an order of conditions was issued on September 4th, 2019, which was another multiple public hearing format. Um, besides that, I've, like you have noted, I've reached out to the applicant, the appellant, many times with no correspondence until late this weekend, um, on the long weekend. So, um, unless you have any other specific questions, I just have that quick summary. Okay. Are there any council inputs that to hear from? No, I think you can, if you're inclined, you can go ahead and 
hold your vote on the motion to continue in abeyance and go forward with the substance if you want to hear from members of the audience and then hold separate votes on the motion to continue and then decide what you want to do about the fact that the appellant is not here. Uh, I will take this time to open it up for public comment and uh, yes sir. Uh, my name is John Halsey. I'm a 30 year resident at 75 Beaver Road in Reading and a member of the Board of Selectmen. Um, there are many things I have to say but I know you want to limit these comments to continuance, and I and I think I can address that. Okay. And, I, and I'd like to speak about it in regard to the to the public interest and welfare, frankly. And I think that I would I would say, Mr. Chairman, to yourself and the other boards, the other members of your board, that a consideration is that this is a project that's been over a year in the making. It's been in the process since May. Um, it has found its way through numerous public hearings. It has, we have found that the, the applicant for this project has kind of gone out of their way in many ways to let this be as transparent and open as it could possibly be. Um, back to the public interest and the continuance. At this point in time, given what has transpired from beginning to date, um, on behalf of the uh, original applicant for the project and the applicant, the appellate, uh, it, who has now, at the 11th hour, called in um, a strike to say, please give me more time, when there has been more than adequate time. Let's get to the issue of public, the public interest and welfare. And I'm speaking to you as a citizen, although I am a member of the Board of Selectmen, Here's what I know. Um, there are many, many citizens of Reading here tonight. They have followed the process of being aware of a public meeting. I myself, you know, have paid close attention to this project for a number of reasons, which I'm happy to address when we're not speaking about the opinions, and would like the opportunity to speak again when that comes up. However, we have all of these people here who have taken time out of their day to be part of the public process that you folks are adjudicating this evening. Um, the idea of delay, um, further delay, particularly on a project of this nature, um, has several implications. One of those is, as we know, I, I, I was outside all afternoon. I don't know if anybody else was. Uh, the weather is changing. It's, it's, we're coming to that time when these kinds of projects can really get stuck in the mud, literally. Uh, if, it, if not in the snow. And that's so important to the public interest regarding this continuance, in my opinion. Beyond the obvious, um, the plans, the, you know, the utilization of the program at the school, I would remind everyone here that a fairly substantial percentage of the budget of this project is designed to assist the entire town of Reading in a project that will mitigate many of our flooding issues in that area. This is not small. This is very large. And should we delay and find ourselves in, you know, in a place where construction can't continue, not only is the project and the utilization by the students impaired significantly, and it is, the public interest is also significantly impaired because as this project completes itself, we find ourselves in a position to be greatly benefited as a town on floodplain issues and things of that nature. I would urge you to reject the continuance of this and hear tonight the appeal as you've received it um, with the you know with the comments of pe many people here are abutters. Some other people are members of committees who have already adjudicated this particular project, including myself. Um, when we were, we were approached as a Board of Selectmen early in this process to ask our permission to increase their budget to help us with an issue that we've got in town that can, you know, 
ought likely be resolved. So I would urge you to move forward with, with as much speed as possible and deny this continuance. Thank you. I, I just have to say, many of the questions that the board has may have in regards to this lady's standing and where we are on this procedurally, I believe that I can answer them pretty substantially. And it may, I think it's central to the question of whether this board decides to continue or not continue. I really, really think it's central to, to that issue for the board to hear this. Thank you. I say go ahead. All right. <clears throat> With all due respect to this board, Austin Preparatory School does not believe that this board has jurisdiction over this matter for the following reasons. Number one, the appellant does not have standing to appeal. That's legally does not have standing and factually does not have standing. Two, the alleged appeal was not timely filed. Regardless of what people say, it was not timely filed. Three, the alleged appeal does not comply with the procedures established in the bylaw itself, section 4.6.10. Number one, in regards to lack of standing, Ms. Louise L. Hillman signed and brought this alleged appeal individually. She does not have standing, however, to bring this appeal. The Town of Reading Zoning Bylaws state explicitly at section 4.6.10 as follows. Any person aggrieved by a decision of the CPDC pursuant to section 4.6, may appeal such decision to the Zoning Board of Appeals within 20 days of the date filed with the town clerk. A party must be aggrieved to have standing to appeal. Ms. Hillman is not a person aggrieved within the meaning of the bylaw or the law. To be a person aggrieved, she must be one who suffers some infringement of her legal rights. Such injury must be more than speculative, must be private, particularized, special, different, distinct from the general community interest as well as not too remote. Ms. Hillman is not an abutter to Austin Preparatory School, nor is Ms. Hillman an abutter to an abutter. Ms. Hillman is not on the certified list of abutters to Austin Preparatory School. Ms. Hillman is not a party in interest, nor is she a citizen of Reading, nor a property owner in Reading. Under the law, only a limited class of individuals, those whose property interests will be affected, is given standing to challenge the board's exercise of its discretion. The abutters of Austin, Austin Preparatory School did not appeal the CPDC's decision. Ms. Hillman is therefore not an aggrieved person under the law because she is not a property owner and has not suffered any individualized or cognizable injuries recognized by the law. Ms. Hillman thus cannot provide credible evidence that she is going to suffer special and different from the concerns of the rest of the community because she does not have a legal rights or property interest adversely affected thereby. <coughs> Louise L. Hillman is demonstrating nothing more than expressing her personal opinions and conceptual <coughs> claim of a general <coughs> civic interest. Although Ms. Hillman's letter purports to be on behalf of an organization, it was individually signed and submitted by Ms. Hillman. No organization entitled Citizens Environmental League and Community Preservation Society is in existence with Secretary of State of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Environment, Citizens Environmental League and Community Preservation Society also does not own any real estate interest as an abutter to Austin Preparatory School, nor in the town of Reading, and thus does not have a cognizable interest sufficient to establish it is aggrieved. Likewise, it is settled law in Massachusetts that a statement of organizational purpose cannot close civic association with aggrieved person status. Aggrieved person status is no less a jurisdictional condition to maintaining an appeal to a Board of Appeals under Mass General Laws Chapter 48, Section 6, than it is to maintaining judicial review under Section 17. To quote the, the precedent-setting case of Chongress, I have all of these cases, and I'll submit them in a memorandum to the Board uh, after, after I've completed. Ms. Hillman individually signed the alleged appeal despite the fact that she and the alleged organization are not aggrieved and thus quoting the court in Turner, she had quote, no right to file it and the board has no authority to hear it. Number two, the appeal was not timely. Ms. Hillman did not timely file the alleged appeal. The town of Reading zoning bylaws stated section 4610 as follows. Quote, any person aggrieved by a decision of the CPDC pursuant to section 4.6 May, may appeal such decision to the Zoning Board of Appeals within 20 days of the date filed with the town clerk. 
the CPDC filed its site plan review approving Austin Preparatory School's lower field project with the town clerk on August 13th, 2019 at 1.47 p.m., counting 20 days from August 14th, 2019, giving the alleged appellant the benefit of the doubt by not counting the day the CPD actually filed the decision. That date would be September 2nd, 2019, which is Monday, which was Labor Day. If despite the town, uh, town of Reading's general bylaws at section 1.112, which basically state that every day should be counted if it's over a seven-day appeal period, if we give the benefit of the if we give the benefit of the doubt to the appellant um, of an additional day because of the town hall being closed, then the deadline to file would have been September 3rd, 2019, 21 days after the CPDC's filing of the CPD decision with the town clerk. So September 3rd, that would have been the deadline. On Wednesday, September 4th, the 22nd day after the CPDC filed its decision with the town clerk, Austin Preparatory School's legal counsel went to the town clerk's office to purchase a stamped and certified copy of the CPDC site plan review decision, certifying and stating that no appeal had been filed within the required 20-day appeal period. At that same time, on September 4, 2019, and in the presence of Austin Preparatory School's legal counsel, the town clerk checked the appropriate files and determined there were no appeals of the CPD decision in the file. While said legal counsel was there, she also checked her office and determined at that time that there were no appeal of the CPDC's site plan review decision. The town clerk also conferred with her staff, then in attendance, who at that time also confirmed that they had no knowledge of any appeal of the CPDC's site plan review decision. Only after the town clerk had checked those sources did she stamp and certify the CPCD, CPDC decision with the following certification and give it to the Austin Preparatory School Legal Council, which certification uh, of the decision reads, quote, September 3rd, 2019, hereby certify that 20 days have elapsed since this decision was filed in this office and no appeal from the decision has been filed and it was signed by the town clerk. We have a copy of that that we will provide you tonight and I have the original if the board wants, wants that. On Thursday, September 5th, the, tw the 23rd day, after the CPDC filed its decision with the town clerk, the town clerk was out of the office and away from town hall. The town clerk first became aware of this alleged appeal on Friday, September 6th, the 24th day after the CPDC filed its decision with the town clerk. Prior to Friday, September 6th, the town clerk had no concrete and actual knowledge of an appeal. To quote the court in, in the Hickey case, Quote, it is the state of the clerk's knowledge that controls, end quote, and consistent with this Austin Preps case, quote, in no way was the clerk made aware that a complaint had been filed prior to, prior to the expiration of the time in which to appeal, end quote. Such timing is not in compliance with the zoning bylaws within requirement. To quote the bylaw once again, appeal such decision to the Zoning Board of Appeals within 20 days of the date filed with the town clerk. As stated by the court in the Bingham case, quote, failures in meeting the 20-day deadline are not forgiven, end quote. To quote once again the Bingham case, timely institution of appeal should be held as a condition signed qua non. And to quote further, quote, some errors or omissions are seen on their face to be so repugnant to the pr pr uh, procedural scheme, so destructive to its purpose, so as to call for the dismissal of the appeal. In this case, the Austin, Prep Austin Preparatory School like in the Bingham case, received a certification of no appeal. We thus refute any conclusion that this alleged appeal was properly and timely filed. The burden is on an appellant to meet the deadline and to prove that she did so. It appears that the appellant mailed her alleged appeal by regular mail, and thus, as in the case of Costello, in which the mail did not arrive prior to the expiration of the appeal period, this alleged appeal should likewise be denied for lack of timeliness. If the appellant cared enough about this case, then the appellant could have filed her alleged appeal in the usual manner, which is by hand delivery and then obtaining a stamped receipt, or by mailing the alleged appeal postage prepaid U.S. certified mail with a return receipt, neither of which the appellant could be bothered to do. Austin Preparatory School thus has been prejudiced by the appellant's failure to timely file her alleged appeal and receive timely constructive notice thereof including but not limited to loss of advantageous financial arrangements, loss of time, loss of opportunity, and incurring additional expense, just to name a few. We therefore, de not to mention due process, <laughs> we therefore declare that the appeal deadline under the town zoning bylaw has expired and lapsed 
by the time the town clerk received and had actual knowledge of the appellant's purported appeal and that the appeal was received too late, was untimely, and is thus a nullity. As the court noted in the O'Blen's case, this rule is jurisdictional and failure to comply deprives the courts of jurisdiction to hear the appeal. Thirdly, non-compliance with the bylaw. Ms. Hillman did not comply with the terms of the Town of Reading Zoning Bylaw. The Town of Reading Zoning Bylaw at 4610, any person aggrieved by a decision of the CPDC pursuant to Section 4.6 may appeal such decision to the Zoning Board of Appeals within 20 days of the date filed with the town clerk. Ms. Hillman, however, apparently did not care enough uh, about this matter to ensure she was complying with the terms of the bylaw by actually reading and referring to the Town of Reading Zoning Bylaws, which she could have easily reviewed on the town's website or by purchasing a hard copy of the bylaw. Thus, consistent with the decision of the court in the Blends case, Ms. Hillman has no one to blame but herself for her alleged appeals non-compliance with the terms of the bylaw. With that said, Ms. Hillman did not file, uh, did not file, no, with, uh, sorry. With that said, Ms. Hillman did not file with, nor even send the appeal to the Zoning Board of Appeals as required by the explicit terms of the Towns of Reading book zoning bylaws. As the court stated in the Costello, case. A notice is not given until received by the person to be notified. As a result of Ms. Hillman's apathy, this board did not receive the appellant's alleged appeal by the appeal deadline of September 3rd, 2019. I believe this board first became aware of the alleged appeal on or about October 3rd, 2019, 30 days after the appeal period had already expired. In fact, Ms. Hillman's alleged appeal letter is extremely vague, never even references the Zoning Board of Appeals, and was not even addressed to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Boston Preparatory School has been prejudiced by Ms. Hillman's apathy and lack of any reasonable attempt on her part to comply with the zoning bylaw, and thus consistent with case law, Ms. Hillman's alleged appeal is a nullity and should be denied. Thank you. Since it's still open for public input, I will entertain any other comments here. Yes, way in the back there. I apologize, I couldn't hear everything. Um, I, am, I am an abutter, and um, I sometimes travel for work. Your name is? Sarah Rambo. Um, I live, again, a butter right next to Austin Prep. Um, have experienced for many months lots of um, blasting and tremors coming from lots of construction that's been done there. Um, and I, uh, so what has happened to myself, my neighbors, many people in the neighborhood from construction going on is there has been an influx of animal activity that has kind of wreaked havoc on some of our lives. <laughs> um, I don't know what the large turnout is in regards to today. I'm not sure how many people are for this <clears throat> project or against the project. I wish that I knew more about the benefits of the project. Again, I travel for work. Um, I'm not always home. I don't get those letters in time. I did get this appeal in time because it seemed to have had a long, a long mailing um, window. <laughs> um, uh, so I'm, I'm going to just suggest that because of the turnout, it's a massive turnout, and there are many people, I'm sure, who couldn't make it this evening. Um, and regardless of, of when the clerk knew or the board knew, the filing time, I think, was the cutoff, maybe technically one day after. There can be exceptions to be made by one day, and it's a holiday, potentially. Um, um, because of the turnout, I am asking that you reconsider um, uh, um, abolishing the, the appeal itself um, and hear from more people from the public. Um, everybody I ask of, in my neighborhood about the construction issues, that the construction's great, you know? More people, more taxes, more you know, taxpayers, I should say. Um, it's fantastic. However, there are things that need to happen in order to prevent issues that have happened to me. Um, 
uh, I, I've told the board this before, I, ha I had planned to leave my home to the town, I don't have children, uh, to the town as open space. But I probably can't do that now. It's been costing me thousands and thousands of dollars in repairs um, and abatement to try to remove what has broken into my house and done a tremendous amount of damage. Um, and you don't always know it's there. My house is immaculate, um, um, uh, and I have, it's just changed my life dramatically, as well as other neighbors around me. So um, that's a plea that I'm making in order to hear more from the public um, on various sides of it. I, and again, I wish I knew more about the project. I, it's the timing for notices for me does not work. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, excuse me. My name is James Hickey. I'm the headmaster of Austin Prep. Uh, this process has been going on for quite some time, and, and Austin Prep has gone to great lengths to make the process open and transparent. We, as an institution who has been uh, filing, going through the permitting process, we have appeared in front of uh, the select board, we have appeared in front of the CPVC, and we have appeared in front of the Conservation Commission. Each of those appearances required notification. Prior to the, progress, uh, to the uh, process starting, we also sent a letter to all of the school's neighbors and abutters to come to Austin Prep to make them aware of the project so that we could have conversation related to that. Um, one of the things that concerns me here is that we received an appeal. This, for whatever reason, this has now caught the attention of, of the wider community. And uh, I'm concerned that this is now going to become a new open forum to discuss items that should have already been discussed in front of the CPDC and, and the Conservation Commission and the Select Board. So as I understand it, and I'm a layman here, we have a person who has filed an appeal Austin Prep is questioning the legitimacy of that appeal, but in the process, I'm now concerned that this is now going to become an open forum to revisit and relitigate that which has already been discussed. So for folks to stand up and say, you know, they were not aware, this has been going on for months. Certified letters have been going out for weeks, months, including Austin Prep inviting uh, neighbors and, and, and abutters onto our campus to talk about the project. It doesn't seem like, you know, an authentic position to take. Somewhere along the line in the last six months, there had to be some lead time before tonight. So um, my hope is, is that you know, the board considers this, uh, this matter before it. One is the, you know, the, the continuance issue for sure, and once that matter is decided, then taking a look at the, you know, the, the legitimacy or the uh, attorney Latham explained, the jurisdictional issue related to this matter. In the process, I mean, this is not an inexpensive ordeal. Austin Prep, we've been here for nearly 60 years. We want to be a good neighbor. We are not perfect. We are made up of an organization with a lot of people. Human beings are imperfect. I do as headmaster whatever I can to live within the spirit of the law. Do sometimes people say, uh, Austin Prep didn't do X, Y, and Z appropriately? Sure, that's going to happen. But we do our very best to be good neighbors in this process as we have done all along. And in this process, what I'm very concerned about is, frankly, the money that we are spending. I mean, we engaged in, in good faith with the town of Reading to remediate a public interest that uh, uh, John Halsey was referencing. As the board probably knows, Willow Street flooded. As part of this arrangement, we have given um, access, we, we executed an agreement with the town of Reading to give the town access to our property so that deficiency in the Abajona River can be remediated. Austin Prep has also contributed $75,000 to, uh, to offset that cost. And in this interactive process, as Austin Prep has appeared before all of these um, various boards, when in that interactive process, when members of the community made requests for us because they felt it would improve their standard of the quality of their life, Austin Prep made those concessions. I mean, in one small example, um, in front of the CPDC, there was a request that a, the original plan had called for a post rail, split rail fence. Some of the neighbors had asked for a solid board fence. That solid board fence is costing Austin Prep $128,000. That was done as a gesture of goodwill. We want to be good neighbors. But in this process, you know, there's a limit to, you know, to the money that the school can expend reasonably. There's engineers here tonight. There are, uh, we're paying for legal counsel tonight. There's a lot of folks out here tonight. 
So I would, I would urge the board to, um, you know, to dispense with the matter by, you know, one not issuing the continuance and then, you know, um, find in uh, Austin Prep's favor related to the jurisdictional issue. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Hi, my name is David Panetta. I live at 22 Colonial Drive, and I'm also a member of the Conservation Commission. Just to piggyback what uh, Dr. Hickey has said relative to uh, one of the women that just spoke is in the butter. Um, I don't want to trivialize or render moot all the hard work that all the boards have already done for this project over the months that have preceded this meeting. Um, Austin Prep came before the Conservation Commission. It was several meetings that we went through. There were a lot of changes that were made in their plans. A durable order of conditions were, was, uh, was granted and signed uh, for Austin Prep to move forward with this project. I don't want to see this project delayed any further than it has. There's been a lot of people that have done a lot of hard work, not only on Austin Prep side, but also on the town board sides. You know, we don't want to reopen this whole whole project for public opinion again. It's, everyone has already had their opportunity to speak at the boards as this has gone through this, went its way through the, the town process. So at this, this point, um, as a member of the Conservation Commission that, that studied this project very substantially and granted the permission for them to move forward, I would, I would urge that you deny the uh, appeal process. Thank you. Yes, sir. If I may, for the record, I'm Steve Chapman, 66 Causeway Road, a direct abutter to the project. I find myself in a very awkward position because I feel that I am not an advocate for this project. Being a direct abutter is definitely impacting my property. However, I need to say that I'm surprised at the turnout today because my wife Carol and I one other neighbor beside me and one other neighbor across the tracks from me were the only individuals at all of the CPDC hearings. We were shocked by that. We couldn't believe that there was nobody coming out against the project. We participated in the school's open house forum, talking about the pros and cons of the project. There was quite a bit of negative comment made at that open house, but never followed up at the CPDC or at the Conservation Commission. Unfortunately, again, I'm not an advocate, but I have trouble accepting the fact that it's been appealed. Thank you. you have trouble that it's being appealed? That it has been appealed. The process has been followed through, and if what Attorney Latham is saying, it sounds like there may be not, no grounds for the appeal, unfortunately. Okay, Any others? Yes. My name is John Jenks. Um, I'm a lifetime resident of Frederick. We went through something in our neighborhood uh, 10 years ago with the um, uh, flyovers for 93 and 128. We became part of two organizations that kind of melded together, and we were up against deadlines against Mass, <coughs> excuse me, Mass DOT, um, the state, the Secretary of State's office, and we had to meet deadlines on a regular basis. And we did that, and that's why today you don't have flyovers at 93 and the whole west side district from the top of South Street at Main Street to West Street, those homes wouldn't be there anymore. There would be 100 foot flyovers to sit in traffic that no one was going anywhere. So my point is, <coughs> history repeats itself. <clears throat> I'm also a town employee, I'm a firefighter here. Um, I will say I do have a student at Austin Prep going through the process, and I have many friends. I went to Reading High. I've been here my whole life. I believe they're good neighbors. You fell into a very similar category as we did, but because of the appeal part and the, you didn't follow the rules, you didn't play the game the way that it has to, I don't want to call it a game, but the legal part of it, you failed, where 10 years ago we didn't fail, and we saved what we wanted to be and where we were and DOT worked for us they did studies and they still haven't done anything because there's nowhere to put the traffic right so little apples and oranges but again we were met on details with numerous people that like it's got to be here tomorrow so we got it there the day before 
It can't be after the fifth, so we got it there on the first. That's how this game works. When you don't play by the rules and you don't even show up, I can't tell you, you know, we packed this room at the same time. The next time they had to have it at Parker, and the meeting after that, we were at the high school and we filled it. So we're going to have more and more meetings with more and more people for someone who really hasn't played with the process at all and seems to just be trying to delay it to cost more money and make more aggravation for a neighbor. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. How you doing? Steve Marisolo, Free Pilgrim Road. I am also in the butter. I have been here since every first meeting along with Steve. I guess I would have to agree as it does impact my family and it does impact my residents. But I agree with Steve and reiterate what he said that we didn't fail the appeal. But as the turnout is here, maybe it warrants a little more conversation by just the masses in the room, the people who are but Boston Prep. Is there anyone else? Uh, yes, sir. Kevin Neal on 31 Selfridge Road. I'm going to butter it as well. And I, I can't say that I've been given ample notice as far as the hearings. I haven't experienced the, the animal issues uh, that the woman raised, so <coughs> tremors or anything like that. But um, it seems like this the woman that have uh, filed doesn't have standing. And um, I don't think the board should delay the vote any longer. Uh. Uh, move forward and deny it. Yes, sir. Ken Lafferty, uh, 35 Stewart Road, former town meeting member, uh, former bylaw committee member. Um, the CPCD for, exists for the purpose of making decisions and recommendations concerning the town's resources. The approval by the CPDC <coughs> and the CONCOM for this project were made after an extensive process that is, that is designed to ensure these committees protect the town's resources. This application has gone through an approval process and has justifiable and adequate oversight. It will continue to have adequate oversight moving forward if the project does. The conditions that were uh, attached to the approval of the CONCOM and the DEP will continue to provide oversight throughout the project and even after it. Environmental concerns are going to be addressed and have been addressed by those boards and committees even uh, and we even will continue after construction. The approval process of the CPDC and the town's committees and boards are performed by the people who we entrust in the process. They do extensive work and they need to be supported in their decisions. They ensure the system is in fact effective and fair. It's a very important for local process for the town's government to protect these resources while allowing the town to progress and flourish. The, town, the process has included extensive discussions and planning. Concerns have been fleshed out and addressed. Notifications have been made. Resident comments have been considered and addressed, and sound decisions have been made by the board members. This approval meets the spirit and jurisdiction of the CPDC. There's no allegation of improper process applied. There's no allegation of circumventing the requirements. Unless there's improper procedures identified, this board and the boards and committees should be supported with the sound decisions that they make and, and be upheld through an appeal process. We, we rely on these people to make good decisions, and, and it works for the town. They do great jobs for everything. Some of the parties may not like the outcome of the, of, the, of the decision, but there's no evidence that the rules and the processes were not followed. The applicants worked very closely with the process, addressed the concerns, been willing to go above and beyond. The applicants invested time, money, and process and tried to do things the proper way, and there's no good reason to continue to withhold it. There's no place for an outside group to attempt to use the appeal process to needlessly de delay a pro project to further their interest, exposure, or leverage themselves. The Reading should not entertain such tactics the local government process. Uh, yes. Um, I agree with what that gentleman just said. And I just want to clarify that the large numbers here today, not I'm not in a butter. I am a resident Reading resident, but I'm here to support um, that this appeal not go forward. So I don't think you can assume Mara O'Neill. <coughs> there were some assumptions made that the people here were um, a butters and wanted this project delayed. I just want to. Yes, sir. Obviously, Austin Prep has a vested interest in the in the project moving forward, and many, if not a majority, of the people here tonight are from Austin Prep, who came to show, you know, their support for the project, and that's why um, I think the room is is filled. We're all Reading residents. Any other comments? 
not, I may just approach the board to submit the memorandum and the case law in support of our position. Thank you. comments before I close the public hearing. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, Jim Burns, 27 Estate Lane. So I'm here um, to support the denial of the appeal. Um, for all the reasons everybody just said, uh, I think it went through due process. It sounds like a lot of work, hard work by a lot of smart people went into this decision, um, and I think it should move forward. I, I my property, um, Borders, Birch Meadow Elementary School, and the one, th well, it's a bunch of things I love about the fall, but what I love about the fall is I get to see the lights on the field, and I hear the band play from my house, and it's awesome. And I love hearing the games. I can hear the announcer from my house. First down, running. I mean, I love that stuff. So let's get going. Let's get going. Let's build that field. Let some of these people enjoy what I get to enjoy from my house. It's life. Let's move forward. You and someone else had his hand up. Yes. Hi, I'm Ray Hanlon. I uh, 13 years at uh, 78 Middlesex Avenue in Reading. My daughter's a senior at Austin Prep. And uh, I'm here to support the schools, uh, you know, that this project move forward. <coughs> One concern that I had about this person is if they were legitimately going to be here. To legitimately represent an organization, why isn't someone else from this organization showing up? Another hand over here. No, you. Yeah. Hi, my name is Joy Krippa. I'm a longtime resident uh, of Reading as well at Three Whittier Road. Um, I'm also a, a parent of my son who goes to Austin Prep. He's a senior and he's a co captain with his friend of the, uh, the Austin Prep baseball team. Um, it, it just seems to me that, that it's something you had mentioned. If she was serious about this, she would have been here, or she would have been able to send somebody to represent her and, and share her side of the story, that we're all looking to hear about what her side of the story is. If, there were, if this were continued, it impacts the student athletes who are passionate about this, just as all of us who are sitting here, came here today, are very passionate about this project. If she shared that same passion about what her objections are, she would be here or she would send a representative to do that. Yes, sir? I'd just like to add to that, that was my wife that just spoke, but a school that's been here for 54 years deserves to make improvements. And, you know, construction happens. You know, I feel bad for the people who are experiencing problems with roads or whatever. If anyone wants to elaborate on that so I can understand that better. But Reading, uh, Austin Prep's been here for a long time now. And, um, you know, I think Austin Prep's been a good member of the, the uh, Reading community. And so I'd like to see her. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Karen Croto, um, been a lifetime member of Reading, been here since 1976. Um, my son is the other co captain of the Reading High Baseball, I'm uh, sorry, Austin Prep Baseball team. Um, with regards to the questions um, from some of the abutters wondering if the turnout tonight is for that, if there's any question to that, I would actually offer up to ask how many people are actually here in support of the motion to dismiss the appeal as opposed to any concern. I think yeah, the I hands go up. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the other point is, you know, with respect to the concern of the rodents, um, there's a lot of construction going on in the town of Reading, period. There are new water lines being put in on Lowell Street. There are new water lines being put in on West Street. So to correlate that this has to do entirely with this rebuild of the project, I think, is, is a bit of a stretch. That's just what's going on with the development of the town of Reading. So um, while it's an inconvenience, um, I live right off of 129 as well. So we're in a position it could actually impact us. But as Joy said, this is about the kids. So thank you. Thank you. Are we getting close? I'll call on her first, and then I'll get back to you. Yeah. Hi, young man. Yeah. 
I'm uh, Damon Krupa. I'm a co-captain of the Austin Fred baseball team. Uh, I'm out here on a Wednesday night just in support. I'm obviously one of the few kids out here, but I'm so passionate about my program. I'm just, I just want to second everything that everyone who's in support has said. And I, we, we are looking forward to a great year this year. And uh, it's just tough to keep seeing the delay over and over. But I, with all due respect, like, we just, that's basically, we just want to have a great year this year and just all the delays it's just here. John Halsey again, um, 75 View Road. As a point of clarification for me, um, are you taking comments on the entire discussion for this evening or just around the continuance of this? Well, we started out doing it around the continuance. Well, the reason I ask is I, I have a lot to say in support of this project, <laughs> but I tried to respect what you were asking for. I, I've sat in that chair and I understand, you know, how difficult it can be to, you know, try to, you know, control it. Um, so I just want to respectfully say that um, not only do I hope that there is no continuance, that there'll be an opportunity to have a hearing, because I have more to say when you get to that. Okay, thank you. The other. I just want to point out, before I close the public hearing, that, you know, it is not, it is not the responsibility of this zoning board to revisit the site plan review and do it again for them okay it's our I think it's our responsibility to make sure that they adhere to the process and did it the way they were supposed to do it and it's also part of our responsibility that the appeal process is done in accordance with the rules of the game as well so that's where we are here tonight and I'm going to close the public portion of here and then I'm going to go back to uh, I guess I'll, I'm going to talk to Andrew and Andrew and Eagle first and see if they have any comments to some of the points that have been raised not in terms of like or dislike of the project but in terms of what <coughs> the might have brought up the only item I would add is that the Reading Chronicle who does our legal ads which is one way the public knows about these hearings um, could not reach the appellant at their address, the um, fee they typically charge was returned to them, noting that this business or nonprofit did not exist there. So it just adds another layer to it. But um, other than that, I have no interest. So. Attorney Latham brought up several comments vis a vis non adherence to the appeals process. I don't know whether you've seen all of those comments prior to this meeting and whether you have any comments vis a vis. I have. Yes, so I, I have seen his materials before earlier today, reviewed his memo, reviewed his cases. And as to the matter of the continuance, I continue to believe that there is a distinction that we can draw between the issue of standing to bring the appeal versus whether she's entitled to a continuance so that you deal with the substance in two weeks. But for the continuance, focusing just on that um, motion that you have before you or, or that discussion, you haven't heard any evidence from anybody who's here in favor of granting the continuance. At least I haven't heard it. She would be responsible, uh, she being Laura Hillman, who signed the letter and requested the continuance, is responsible for providing you with evidence to support her request for a continuance. So it is your responsibility to look at what she stated as her reasons for a continuance, her family crisis and her inability to, pre to prepare for this hearing, versus what you've heard today and the adverse impact on uh, Austin Prep if you do continue it. Weigh those two and decide where you would like to come out on whether to grant or deny the continuance. And then we can talk about uh, if you decide to deny the continuance, I'd be happy to address Attorney Latham's points on um, jurisdictional issues. Thank you. Uh, before I 
ask for a vote. I'm going to go around the table with the members again and ask if any of the material that's been provided to you tonight we have comment to. Sure, I'll, I'll start. So, um, I mean, my interest is really to protect the zoning bylaws, which protect the residents of Reading, and the process is important. Um, in light of the certificate of no appeal that's signed by the um, town clerk, that's something I wasn't aware of before. Um, in fact, I also hate to make assumptions about you know the applicants, their intentions, and all. I think in this case, I feel comfortable that I don't even have to because. You know, there is a process, there is a timeline, and it seems very clear to me that that deadline was not met. That's kind of where I'm standing right now. There are, I, th I think there are two issues in my mind. Issue number one is, does, does anyone uh, under 4.6.10 have the ability to come forward and make an appeal? Um, I think um, Attorney Latham uh, clarified that who um, has status or who's eligible for status. And hearing from Andrew, our planner, um, and other individuals who have over a period of time, it's not just been the last 24 to 48 to uh, 96 hours. It's the number of people who have not been able to get a hold of uh, um, the Citizens Environment League and Community Preservation Society and where it's actually located. I think the fact that the Reading Chronicle could not get a hold of the individual who had to write the appeals and for advertisement purposes, which is part of the whole process here um, to be advertised so that everybody would know that we're having a meeting because they were not able to get a hold of the individual at that particular address. It, it lends credence to the fact that maybe there isn't standing here. Um, the second issue is what happens if there is standing? Uh, then you have to meet the criteria. Um, under 4.6.10 of the Reading Zoning Bylaw also, and that is in terms of times and dates. Um, and I think when Andrew went through the process of when this was all heard and done, and again, uh, Attorney Latham uh, gave us that rebuttal on, uh, or preference, not preference, but present presentation on <coughs> what the timeline, calendar-wise, chronologically was, um, that this has not been met either. So it looks, it, it certainly appears that uh, there are two strikes against the individual before they even started, before we even got here tonight. Uh, the third strike, um, if you want to consider it, is what would happen um, if it was a legitimate appeal, you'd have to go through the process. And I think Nick and uh, Attorney Latham and uh, the chairman have indicated that we're not going to go through item by item. This is not the board's, um, it's not within the board's purview to take item by item on a CPD decision, nor Conservation Commission, nor any other board's decision to go through that. That's what our process is in the town of Reading, as it is in most communities. So. Strike three is we have followed the process all the way, I shouldn't say we. The original applicant, which is Austin Prep, has followed the process to go through it all the way, has gotten its decision, and it was untimely that somebody appealed that decision. And did the person have a have a status to begin with? And to me, uh, didn't meet all, any of the three requirements, so I'm not in favor of adding a uh, continuance in this situation. Every time, as I said, every time that this board, when I've been sitting, um, has given a continuance, it's always been for a legitimate reason. And it has always been, and we have a new um, uh, building commissioner who may want to weigh in on this too, but every time that happens, 
and you request either a decision, you're requesting relief from the decision of either the building commissioner in particular cases or in other boards, you have to have justification. It has to be legally presented. And again, it has not been this evening. So I'm not in favor of continuance. <laughs> I believe Nick and John have covered the majority in all of the statements that I would be making. As far as my commentary is concerned, I think I said most of it at the outset of this meeting. Uh, I think CPTC has done its job in this site plan. And, uh, I think the appellant has not done their job to respond with their appeal appropriately and the justification and information that supports the case. So I am not in favor of the continuation of this case at all. So if there's not any other comments on this table, I will entertain a motion for the continuance. <coughs> Well, you, we, we all have to uh, do it in a f uh, positive framework, so the motion would have to be to grant the petition. Yes, to grant the petition. The motion would be to grant the petition. All right, I'll uh, motion to grant the app. The continuance, rather. I'll motion to grant the continuance of uh, Citizens Environmental League um, to appeal the CPDC site plan review decision under Section 4.6.10. And so uh, we have a commitment. We have one here. We have to have a second also. Do we have a second? We do have a second. I just point out that we have four voting members, the four that you're seeing here tonight. We need three out of four to pass a continuance. So all in favor of approving the continuance? All not in favor? Now we need to move on with the appeal. And uh, we deny the appeal or approve the appeal as with the information we have available to us tonight. So I'd like, like to open up the discussion <coughs> on the appeal. I guess I would ask Mr. Latham to uh, begin that part of the conversation. Yeah, I would, I would just reiterate the four points of standing which are central to whether there's any legs that this appellant has uh, to bring this forward. The gist of it is, is that basically we don't believe that she has legal standing to bring this appeal because she's not, um, she's not an aggrieved party just as it states right at the beginning of the bylaw, 4.610. So pretty much what you're going to say now is what you've already said. Yeah, I'm just going to defer not to repeat it all over again. So number one, doesn't have standing. Number two, the alleged appeal was not timely filed. And number three, the alleged appeal does not comply with the zoning uh, bylaw. And I would just draw the board's attention to uh, Exhibit 6, which is a certified list of abutters. She is not, Ms. Hillman is not on that certified list of abutters. Exhibit 7, letter from the town clerk, basically discussing the fact that Ms. Hillman is not on the town census and she's not on the registered voters list. In terms of her association, which is non incorporated, Secretary of State records indicated is not an incorporated entity. That would be Exhibit 8. And just to re reiterate for the board, um, we are once again talking about Austin Preparatory School, which is a nonprofit educational religious institution. The Dover Amendment applies, and proof that we're talking about a nonprofit religious and educational institution is provided via uh, Exhibit 6. Um, to the uh, packet that was delivered, and uh, that's basically Secretary of State records of the Articles of Organization and amendments there, too. Thank you. Uh, is there any, 
input from Mr. Smith? Um, uh, what you already said? Again, just to add that the other boards are followed by due process and this application or appeal has not seen your normal ZBA application form or other typical requirements even for such an appeal. So um, that's all I would add. Any comment for you, Donna? Yes, yeah, so I'd just like to say that, um, or, or let the board know that it is the appellant's burden to prove that she is a person aggrieved in order to proceed substantively with her appeal. Uh, she isn't here, so the only evidence that you would have to rely on to find that you do have jurisdiction to hear the appeal, this is a jurisdictional matter. She, she has to prove she's a person aggrieved for you to get to the substance of her complaint. The only evidence you have that she's a person aggrieved is in her letter. And the letter simply states that she is an aggrieved party. She does not provide any evidence to support that statement. Uh, given that it is her burden, uh, that seems to me legally insufficient to meet her burden. Thank you. All right, I'm going to go around to board members. I'm going to start with Hillary this time. Great. Um, so I, I don't understand how this is part of the zone. You don't know. If you're, don't, you're asking why is why it before is it the board? Our, yes, zone why is it before appeals. us? Who asked that too? Either the chairman or the town council. Well, it's before you because your zoning bylaw provides that um, persons who are aggrieved by a decision of the CPDC site plan review can appeal to your board to have that decision reviewed to see if the CPDC basically abused its discretion, somehow did something that cannot be supported under the facts when they issued their decision. So that's why it's here, uh, but again, there's those procedural hoops that anybody who wants to appeal it needs to go through, and they've been outlined as They've got to prove that they are a person aggrieved, which means they have a particularized interest that is harmed by the CPDC decision. They have to prove that. Then they have to prove, if you get to the, you have to prove that it was timely filed. Uh, then you also do have to prove that um, the proper steps were paid about addressing it to the proper board. Now that last one is not jurisdictional. So that is just something for you to take into consideration, but it doesn't necessarily throw out the appeal. It, it does not defeat your ability to hear the appeal, unlike the issue about whether or not she is an aggrieved party. If you find she is not an aggrieved party, then the substance of her appeal does not go forward. Okay. No, I, I think the town council did a very good job um, describing the requirements and the process to be followed. And the fact that the board has already made its decision of a continuance, that means it would have to be presented tonight. But beside that, um, all the requirements that have been mentioned have not been met. So, um, again, does the board have the right to turn down the request for the appeal? The board, the answer to that is absolutely, unless you want to correct me. Um, and that's that's where we stand right now. It's not a legitimate appeal. It's almost like you went to the board in school and you put all your reasons down, and somebody came along and with an eraser and erased them all because they weren't applicable to what the argument that you were making. The argument that doesn't stand the the water test, whatever the test it is, it didn't stand it, so it's gone. So that's the way I'm feeling right now. Vic? Yeah, I mean, very similar. I think uh, to protect the integrity of the process, I, I can't see how, how this moves forward. Um, yeah, we'd have to 
denying the appeal. We've already effectively killed the appeal with our last vote. Um, but why not vote on this again? So I feel well, I think we have to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my feelings. Every chair is my feelings. Mr. Chairman, may I just ask a question? Okay. Steve Chavin, 66 Cosby Road. If the appeal were to go forward, are the residents allowed additional testimony, or is it just the appellant that buys the uh, material? So the appellant is the only one who can present the case. The appellant could choose, if she were here, to call you as a witness in support of her case, but you do not have an independent right to present evidence since you did not appeal. Nor any other person from the public or any other rebuttal. Correct. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, my comment on this thing is that I, I find it, get right to the bottom line, I find it very hard to find a person aggrieved by something when they have not participated in the entire process at all. Okay? That, to me, does not... It's hard to defend a grief. Being a grief. They conduct yourself that way. And also the way they conducted the appeal process itself. So I am not in favor either. So if there's no further discussion on the part of the board, I will entertain a motion on granting the appeal. And I assume it will be written up by the legal counsel office. The uh, motion would be to grant the appeal uh, requested of the applicant, uh, Citizens Environment League of Community Preservation Society, um, on the decision of the Grant, to grant on 4.6.10 of the appeal uh, that the planning, uh, Community Planning and Development Commission review decision of the approval of redevelopment and conversion or convert the existing lower sports field area into a synthetic turf multi-purpose field in the property located at 101 Willow Street, Assessor's Map 25, lots 43 and 45, Map 26, of 44 in Reading, Mass. Do I have a second? A second. Can I make a point of order just yes. on, on correcting the motion just to add Louise Hillman individually as an appellant since it's unclear whether yes. she's appealing on behalf of just yes. the society or also herself personally. Thank you. Okay. Do you have a second over here? Yes. Uh, all in favor of granting the appeal? Denying the appeal? Your own. I apologize for taking almost an hour and a half to get through this thing. Sorry. I probably should apologize to the case for this. Thank Thank you all very much. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Long road ahead. Got to get in. We got to get a lot of it tucked in before winter. How you been? Hi, Jim. How are you? Very good. We'll be by for the building. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
I'm just the door guy. Please go out and tell them to be quiet. <laughs> is, that, is that against the rules, too? You can't close the doors. <laughs> okay. Want me to go up and close the doors? <laughs> <laughs> no, John, I don't want to go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, why don't we just do 26 green There's one case together, before, man. one more case before yours, but it's very quick. <laughs> it is, is it? And this is case number 19-14, dealing with 104 Salem Street. Uh, this case was opened, believe it or not, on July 17th of this year. It continued to August 21st, September, uh, September 16th, and to tonight. And now we are faced with a continuance. Other business after this, the whole time. Sometimes, okay. But I'll read uh, a letter we received dated October 15th, sent to the Chairman of the Tuning Radio. Dear Mr. Chairman, on behalf of my client, HB Development Corporation, I respectfully request that you continue this matter until your second meeting in November of 2019. We expect to resolve this matter in an agreeable and acceptable fashion with the Building Commissioner in the very near future. Furthermore, if the continuance is granted on behalf of our client, my client, HP Development Court, the time for the Board of Appeals to render and file and or file a decision with the town clerk is extended till December 31, 2019. Where's truly Brian D. McGrail, Esquire? Uh, so this would be the uh, fourth continuance on this case. Okay. Now he mentions you in here, so what kind of progress are you making on this thing? Zero to none. No, no. We uh, they have uh, they've met with Julie and I um, a couple different times. We have a final meeting hopefully on Tuesday morning for their final plans um, to get approved, and um, that should be the end of it. They'll move forward with a building permit, and they should withdraw. Should be done by right. Excuse me. This will be done by right. Yes. Right. Yes. They're tearing down that whole. They should tear. They are not tearing down the whole house. They're not tearing down the whole house. No. Nope. In order, them, in order for them to use note one, they have to keep the house. So they'll take the main box, they'll move it, they'll put a new foundation in, they'll bring the main box back, and they'll add an addition behind the main box, and that's how they'll get the two family. You get it done before it falls down by itself. <laughs> I'm making them sign a statement, basically, that they realize that if it falls down by themselves, they've lost their rights. Because ah. I don't want any accidents to happen in the move. Thank you. Uh, I'll look for comments from the board. Uh, uh, question I have is if, if it goes forward, we continue it, and it goes forward that uh, they will be able to make their uh, alterations by right. Does that mean they will have to formally withdraw their appeal then, I believe? 
Yes. Yes. I think so. So that so that's at least they're going to be back for that too. Oh, he's back for that. Yeah. Or oh, they could do it by letter, I think. Okay. Oh, they, but there will be the case review. There, there will be an, another hearing on it. Yes. yes. Anyway. Yes. 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 Yeah. Is there any further discussion on this subject? If no. Well, well I think. I think the fact that, you know, in going in the cycle as we just did somewhat and we have done in the past, again, there's justification for the continuance in a situation like this. The applicant is working with the local town and its, its staff to um, take care of something which we would much rather have without a special permit or a variance uh, and take care of it that way by right because they meet the, the criteria uh, in the standing conditions. So, okay. Any other comment? If not, I'll entertain a motion for a continuance of this case until the second meeting in November. Which I believe is November 20th. We already have something for that. Something for that. Yes, we do. Uh, yeah, we have uh, <laughs> summer apps. I have one case already. Yes. Yeah. 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 So we could put this one on the top. Yeah. On the 20th of November, right? Okay. Yes. Is it the 20th of November? The 20th. And a motion to continue to the 20th. So moved. Uh, seconded. Moved. Yeah. Seconded. Yeah. All in favor? 5 zero, zero. This case was opened on uh, June 19th, continued to 8 7, September 18th, and to tonight. Uh, all the members of the board here were at that June meeting, so they're all eligible to vote on this case. Uh, uh, when you came before us on June 19th, I'm trying to recall and just resurrect a little history here. This was the only case. During this discussion, you did bring up the deck. Okay? Then you, you did bring up the deck and closing in the deck. But subsequently, you, you broke them apart. So now you got one case on, on the garage and one case on, on the deck. Okay? Chairman, uh, I probably have to be sworn. I wasn't at the initial session. You want to swear me in? All right. Uh, I thought attorneys were <laughs> exempt from being sworn. <laughs> He's at the spot from time to time. <laughs> Sir, do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm late to the party, uh, but uh, I, I would also ask if both of the cases be heard concurrently uh, by this board. That's uh, 1913 and 1920. Uh, and as the chairman indicated, they relate to two issues. One is the use of an area above the garage existing space, and the second is enclosure of what is now a second floor open deck. Uh, and uh, I, forgive me if I'm repeating some of what was said to you before. I did watch the tapes to try and get up to speed as to the history of this. Uh, this is a two-family dwelling. It's in the residence, excuse me, a, a, commercial, a, residence, a commercial B district, business B district. Um, and as a result, uh, residential use is not allowed. Uh, so that's the, the starting premise for which uh, brings the folks before you uh, for relief. So as to the, uh, as to the issue of the uh, using the garage above the garage for residential purposes, they have a growing family. Uh, they would really be able to use and would like to use that area. In the first application, they requested be used for a bedroom. They, saw, they sent some resistance to that on the board and they are here modifying their request to use it as a family room. Uh, I think part of the credibility had some concern. People have, a, are you going to get permission to do this? Are you going to make another bedroom or make a third uh, unit out of this? I'd like to point out that over the years since 2011, these folks have done nothing 
to use that area contrary to the permission that this board granted for storage. So that shows that they're credible people. Uh, we're more than happy to give any kind of assurances you need that would not be abused if you give relief to allow that area to be used for living, living accommodations for them. The second reason of wanting to enclose the deck is a consequence of a, of a massive building being built behind them. Uh, it's four stories high, it's 55 units, and 69 parking spaces. This is a, a drawing that was presented to the CPDC as part of the 40R approval. It shows the impact that this building has on these folks. But you can see that they totally lose their privacy on their second floor open deck is they're not allowed to enclose that. So that's the motivation behind asking for relief uh, for that, for that be able to enclose that. I also saw on the tape there's some question of whether or not uh, you had authority or the ability to grant permission to amend a special permit. There was discussion about the section changing. I believe I saw a later section that there'd been some research and that done, the decision was made that you could. Uh, in any event, I'd like to point out and quote from two cases for you that are very succinct. Um, the board has the authority to modify an existing permit. In a land court case, and I can give you copies, basically said a special permit granting authority has the same discretion to amend the special permit as it had to grant the special permit in the first place. Supreme Judicial Court made a decision when a board wishes to change or amend a previous decision, a zoning board has the inherent power but that the board may not make a substantial amendment which changes the result of an original deliberate decision or which grants relief different from the original grant without compliance with the relevant notice and hearing requirements. You've done that. You gave notice, you published, so you do have standing clearly by case decision uh, to be able to go back and amend a special permit that was granted before. I'd like to also go to the section, uh, chapter 48, section six, as you know, who have been sitting here for all are aware of that. I'll just quote one section, a pre-existing non-conforming structure or uses may be extended or altered, provided that no such extension or alteration should be permitted unless there is a finding by the permit granting authority, which is you, designating oh, by the bylaw that such change, extension, or alteration shall not be substantially more detrimental than the existing non-conforming use to the neighborhood. That sounds just like the writings of bylaw. That's where the zoning bylaw came from. It's the State Enabling Act that says, so there's both the state statute that allows you to do it as well as the bylaw itself. And of course, you know, there are two sections, the section dealing with non-conforming use, the section dealing with non-conforming structure. <clears throat> they both end up with the core issue being to prove to you, to your satisfaction, that what we're asking for will not be substantial detrimental to the neighborhood. That's the core issue that we're asking, and we're prepared to present that to you tonight. Uh, first of all, there's no change to the footprint being proposed. This is all either within the existing building or in addition to the top of the second floor. As to the height issue, this does not increase the height above the height of the building itself. There'll be a, a roof above what is now the deck, but that's still lower than the total height of the building. I'd like to also show to you photographs of what this deck looks like. These folks have been using this and enjoy it, and they're frankly heartbroken that they'll not be able to use it in an open sense in the future because of what's happening right behind them. This photograph down below I think is good because it shows the way the building is aesthetically going to be connected if you grant relief to allow that to have a roof placed on it. I know at the last session was also a question about height, the interior height of the building. Will it conform to the building code? I have a letter from Phoenix, the architect, on the signature and seal of the architect stating that the area above the garage would be seven feet, six inches, which is three inches above the, uh, the minimum height, uh, and that the uh, porch roof would be uh, side of the perimeter of seven, six, and raised to eight, six. So it clearly conforms to the to the code requirements. So I wanted to give that confirmation to try and address that concern.
one of the cases talks about the quality and character as far as the change is concerned. And I think that you can see from the architectural design, the way these folks maintain their property and other circumstances, there's been no derogation uh, to the quality of what's there now. In fact, as a personal point of view, I think aesthetically, and looking at the architectural drawings, it looks better with that second connector between the garage and the dwelling itself. That's a personal feeling, but I think that it shows it will not be an adverse effect on the quality or character uh, of the property itself. Uh, as, as far as density is concerned, we're not talking about an increase in the number of people living on the property. It's simply to enable them to enjoy that property in a, in a better sense by having a family room to be able to enjoy. You can see from the layout that the second floor is really right now one big room with a kitchen at one end and a living in the other, living room in the area. It's one area. So this will give them an area of some privacy and to allow, say, the children to go off in the, in the, in the family room area while the parents are in the other area. Parking is not an issue for this property if you're driven by it. It has a two-car garage, two parking spaces in front, and additional parking spaces on the right and left, so it's way in excess of any zoning requirement uh, for parking. It will not have any effect on the neighborhood from the current circumstances. It will not affect the character uh, of the neighborhood. I'd like to introduce, if I could, a town map, and which I've marked based upon looking at the assessor's records what are one family, two family, and other uses in the neighborhood. And basically, this whole section of Green Street is all residential. There are three apartments across the street, and I've marked, you can see there are a lot of two families there already in the neighborhood, as well as their property. So again, th what we're asking for is consistent with the character of the neighborhood right now. Thank you. And therefore, will not have an adverse effect on you. Now I know that um, this is not a plebiscite, that we just don't come in with a bunch of people saying go for it and you therefore vote for it. However, since the standard here is whether or not what we're asking for will have a substantial detriment to the neighborhood, what the neighbors have to say is relevant. And I'd like to, I, I saw on the tape that neighbors appeared before and spoke in support of these folks. Uh, we have in addition some letters I'd like to do in the record uh, from the buddies as well voicing their support for what we're asking this board to do. the high points we wanted to go over on the direct presentation. Uh, I'd like to introduce at this point a memorandum that outlines the points that I've discussed tonight. Uh, we're more than happy to answer any questions that, uh, that you may have. Thank you. you want to add to this whole uh, thing? I do not. Okay. Uh, my only comment is I don't see this as being any more detrimental you to the neighborhood. If I come up closer, I have, I have trouble. Yeah, I don't see this as being detrimental to the neighborhood oh, with that, you what you propose. one of my hearing aids if you want. Yeah, I can order I'm sharing. I, I would agree that I don't see that this is a substantial detriment to the neighborhood at all, the, the, the improvements. I think previous discussions we had on this all had to do with the legal lease, where in a, uh, a B zone, uh, uh, was it Building B, I believe? Business B. It's a business B. Yeah, anyway, business B, right. <clears throat> and residential use is not allowed, period. Right. 
So we had much discussion on this in regards to is this an expansion of a residential use or a non-conforming use in a business B district. And if that's the case, in fact, then do we need a variance on this particular case? Maybe you would like to comment on this, Mr. Latham. Well, in looking at section six, it seems to me the state statute anticipates this sort of event. It allows an, an extension on alteration by special permit. And that's what you did in 2011. Okay. That's, that's an existing condition. All we're talking about is going back and taking one restriction in that decision and asking that it be changed to allow it to be a sort of living accommodation. Just a, Bob, just a point of clarification. That came up, and the question was, Beth, you raised it as well, I think, as to whether we might need a variance. And we, we decided we ought to, if we need input from town council, we ought to go do it. Okay. We did have discussions with Mark and Andrew and at the town hall, and the conclusion was that we did not need a variance, that okay. this could be done by amendment or special permit. Now, maybe one of maybe one of these, like the area over the uh, area over, over, the garage, over the garage, which was a condition that, that you couldn't make it living. That's correct. Maybe that should be by amendment. I don't know. Maybe the other one should well, that's be what by I, permit. I, I, I was going to say, but we're dealing but with two different cases now. Yeah. And yeah. the area over the garage was originally allowed via a special permit. I don't believe we've ever dealt with anything on that deck no. uh, in the back. No, we did not. And so that deals itself then back to <clears throat> it's a whole new entity, that particular aspect of the project. Mm -hmm. But the but the but the, the finding of the uh, of the town council the was town for both was of them. That, that you could do you that. could do you could do that over, uh, space over the garage by amendment mm -hmm. as long as you're referencing the current pa paragraphs in the bylaw because the ones that are referenced in the previous decision are not, not there anymore. Let's see. Okay. So now the the other question. Oh, I you had, were going to say something. No, I'm just going to comment that it's, it seems to me that you allowed that connector and all I did was place a deck upon the connector. So <coughs> it's simply an alteration of the special permit that you granted before. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the other aspect I'm looking at here is the uh, certified pot plan. I believe this was the original certified plot plan that was submitted with the addition. Correct me if I'm wrong, it's dated May 4th, 2011. Uh, and it tells me we're building a proposed addition. Well, that's already built. Right. Uh, and on that, that shows a deck at right. the rear. Is this the deck we're talking about that wants to be enclosed? This deck here? No, it's, a de it's right here. It's right here. Well, that's, it's very unclear here. And to my way of thinking, I think we need a new certified plot plan we're, that shows what these improvements are going to be. We're more than happy to do that. If, yeah. if you're satisfied otherwise and impose that requirement, they would do so. Their thought was that the architectural plan showed up um, in the, uh, well, on the existing condition that shows the deck. And then on, that's sheet one, and then sheet two oh, I, 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 shows this from the four season four. Yeah, I, I see that there. Okay. And uh, since it's all within the existing footprint, that's what right, I felt. Right. But if you feel a need, one of okay. the as a condition, I'm sure they'd be more than willing to have yeah. the surveyor yeah. confirm that. I did go and look in the building jacket and an as built plan, I guess, wasn't filed there. Okay. Yeah, you, 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 you're right. I, I would agree with you there that it's, uh, it's kind of ind it's indicated on these architectural drawings that, uh, on that. that so the, the enclosure over that second story deck, pretty much a four season. No, it is. No, he. It'll have no heat. 
It'll be just as exactly as it is. Um, I see, you know, I, I see windows in the front and a gonna, um, shingled roof, asphalt roof, I assume. Yeah, uh, but it's not a four season. It's but like it's a, like a screen porch, like, um, you know, you see on someone's house, like a sun porch. We, we're out there all the time, but we want to feel the breeze. Right, but right. Um, the building behind us has a 3,000 square foot. No, and, and you would have no there. objection if you impose a requirement that it not be heated. Right. And, and I certainly can sympathize with you with what's going on in your backyard there and the overlooking of a four-story building. It's actually 17 feet from right, right, the right, 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 right into your house. Right. Yeah. Well, actually, their common space patio is 3,000 square feet and it's directly across from my deck. So there'll be many people I, out I, there. It's, it's I, I, I think one of the concerns the board had back in 2011, uh, voiced by one of the members, was the, and, and this probably hinged on why it was talked about not to have habitation over, over the garage, that storage area, was the concern about, it's already a two-family, is that going to be put in and be an apartment then and rent it out to somebody? And that would be a three-family. Can I respond to that? I think that, that's a valid concern. People do so, that. Although these folks have not taken advantage of being able to. He's yeah. a plumber. He could have done it very easily. If you want to require it as a condition of approval, approval. then a document be report the registry of deeds. That's a lawful two-family now. But to not be made into a three-family, then certainly people would have yeah. to live with that. Okay. That's what I was going to say. Would you be opposed to a condition that it... Uh, be, be noted to remain to be a two family and to remain as such. Yeah. Okay. That's why we took out the bathroom on the plan to make you guys feel better about us not putting in. First of all, it's not big enough to be an apartment, and second of all, we really don't want a three family house. It's been a two family for ever, and yeah. it's all family. My mom is on the first floor, so. I mean, where would they get in anyway? They'd have to walk cool. through my kitchen. No, I, so. I, I, I understand, and I think, you know, my, my concerns before were more the legalese portions of it in regards to can we do this or can't we do it? Does it require a variance, et cetera, et cetera. I think that's been cleared up. Can I just tell you one thing? Okay. Hmm? It's okay if I speak. What's it? Okay yeah, if I speak. The <laughs> <laughs> um, at the last meeting, um, you were concerned about living space and any some sort of a um, uh, formula that had that. Um, and it wasn't business B that had the formula, it was business A. But I did the formula on my house, and my house has way below the limit of living space if I was in business A. Mm -hmm. There's a house across the street from me that was built, it was a two family, it has a second and third one, and they have way more living space than us. So I just want to let you know, especially you, because you were wondering about that that we're really well below the percentage of living space in a dwelling. The business B district has, uh, you can't cover a lot by more than 85%. Um, the, the answer is like 30%. They're way below any kind of a lot coverage requirement. Uh, well, I, I, I think in this particular case, I, I would not be opposed to the modification of a special permit uh, seeing how that uh, we have advice from town council uh, that uh, this is an option, if in fact we want to do that, amend the original special permit to do this. And I guess we could do that, it sounds like, in both cases on this, uh, the deck and over the garage. Uh, am I not hearing that correctly in well, regards to town council's? Uh, opinion. To me, to me, the cleanest way to do it would be to take the storage area and move it by a, an amendment to the previous right. permit, because that's where the condition was that prevented it from right. being used for the space. Okay. Right. As far as the deck is concerned, which is separately applied for. You know, right. I can see that being done with a special permit. Because you're not amending anything. Not amending, you're right. 
I, no, I agree. You're not amending that original special permit right. because it never covered that deck at all. So it would require a new special permit. Now, can we, can we, whatever, when we reach the decisions on these, can we, can we do one decision right up that puts the two in the same decision? Right up for the same. Just property. being the fact I that there are two separate cases that were advertised, I yes. would do so two right separate decisions. Yes. And the problem yeah. on the deck. I think was, so. Two two separate. I think so. Okay. The deck was really originally okay. included, but it wasn't in the legal. But, but I, I think in, to get back to it. I, I would support this. I do not see an increase in the footprint. Hmm. here. and I certainly think the applicants are. Suffering, you might say, uh, a, a, a hardship. I don't know if that's the right word, but uh, with the construction going on in their backyard, we're going to be overlooking their, their backyard. I think they uh, have an issue with that. Okay. John? Well, I, you know, going back to 2011, mm -hmm. when we were discussing this and looking at it, um, I think. That same issue of a variance versus a special permit was discussed. Was it? Yeah. And I think that what happened was that the board felt that it was easier to go with a special permit as long as the garage above the garage was not going to be used for any residential purposes. And that's why that was granted. There was no deck given as part of the, the distance between no. the house. And that just appeared over time. So my concern is still goes back to that. Um, it's it's hard. Things getting things seem to move along at their own will, and things that were not agreed upon just get moved and after 10 years nobody looked at it so it becomes legal and this is this is the issue that i think back in 2011 was was an issue that we discussed the vote that the the vote was for a one, four to one um, i think things have changed since then but um, especially with the um, the business, well, the five-story building or the four-story building with parking um, that's going to go up there. I mean, that that certainly has expanded. That's in a business A. Business B, but it was built under the Smart Growth 40R. It's 40R, so. 40R, yeah. okay. Um, but it was a business A. No. Or was it a business B originally? B. I, I don't converted. I don't know. Business B is the underlying zoning district with the overlay smart growth district that that was built upon. And that was done after 2011. Yes. So a lot of things have been done to create problems. Um, I, I still struggle with that aspect of it because we're not meeting the in um, the intention uh, of the business bees district and we're encroaching ag again a little bit more into the business B uh, area the special permit um, modifying the uh, I mean the unfortunate part is is the space above the two two car garage was built so that it could accommodate residency up there. That's why it was put up to be a 7.3 minimum, actually 7.6. Mm -hmm. um, there's nothing wrong with that because it still met the, the size requirement at the time. But the intention down the line was, well, we're going to come back and look <laughs> at that. Um, things have, have changed since then, so uh, I'm still not in favor of it, but but because of the the situation that has has been granted by town meeting and, and staff approval of converting it so that that could be used for a smart growth possibility, it it means that you you need to adapt.
the properties around it too. So this is an intention. So that means that once we do this, that anybody else on Green Street will have justification for coming in and doing exactly the same thing. And if that's the case, then why doesn't staff go out and change the business B in that corridor to smart growth again? I mean, the, the, the point of the matter is, um, do we overlook that or do we not overlook that? And I, I'm, I'm thinking that because of the changes, it would be difficult not to look at what is presented to us at this particular time, having known that the bylaws have changed since that went up in 2011. But, um, you know, in terms of the residency aspect of it, I still think that, that, that that's uh, an issue of what it's being used for. So in terms of uh, things like a, a sink and a kitchen and a in a bathroom in the uh, space above the garage. That's not something that I would be in favor of, but that's not being discussed here. So the aspect that uh, town uh, that um, Brad brought up was that we could put a condition on that that it would never be considered as a uh, residence for the purposes of a three-family, uh, which I think would be critical if we were to do something like that. Um, because, it, again, encroachment in this community has continued and continued. Um, and we don't, we don't seem to be able to do, any, to do anything about it. So. I, I, in your arguments, John, I don't know when you were mentioning other residents on the street then would be setting a precedent that why oh, no, I'm just saying that to, some, to somebody out there. In this there, particular case, though, they're not increasing the footprint or the exterior of it all. They're just, number one, you won't see anything over the garage. You said that it's going to be habitable space now, whereas before it was yep. indicated as storage. Yep. And the deck area is going to be enclosed. It's and the deck wasn't part yeah, of the original bird's point. eye view, they're anyway. not expanding or anything else on, yeah. on this. So, that's just my two cents. Hilly? Um, so, the residence behind them is an over the new residence is a 40. Are. Is a smart yes, yeah. and how does that end at that property line, or does that continue into this area? So the 40R Smart Growth Design, Smart Growth Zoning District is an overlay district on Business B. I won't say all because I believe there's a few small areas and other parts of town that might be Business B, but it's entirely it extends past their dwelling. I would caution that 40R district and any construction done under 40R is completely separate from business B. They have different design guidelines, they have different regulations. Any building that's out there that was permitted under business B falls under business B regulations and smart growth guidelines are for this only when applied for for new construction. So Okay, so if we had that like it can't be made a three family that overlay isn't going to negate that in some way. Correct. Uh, Unless, Unless a they new like development a new development came. Okay. That was my question. I don't see that this is detrimental, especially to that area. But just for clarity, because the request, the legal notice still refers to a bedroom and three quarter bath. Right. And that's not but what that's it's not going right. to be. So the legal notice is different. Okay. And when we reviewed this back on June 19th, uh, all this stuff was discussed, but I think there was kind of, I want to say, general recognition and positive view of what you wanted to do. The main issue was how to. The main issue was how to execute what you wanted to do terms of writing up the, any decision, okay? Because there was an issue about various vis-a-vis -vis permit, vis-a-vis -vis amendments and all that stuff, and that's been clarified. So, uh, 
now that we know exactly what you're going to do, I assume you're not going to think about changing the storage game and regulations and something else uh, that uh, you know, I don't have a fundamental issue with what you're doing. I think it enhances the use of your property, particularly the deck with what's going on behind you. Sense that I think any resident would want to do. So, uh, I guess I should open it up to the public and close it again, the public portion. And is there any further comments from any of the board members before we uh, move on to a motion? I guess we're going to need a motion on each one of these. Okay? So, I guess. Any comment on this any further? Anybody? Entertaining motion, first of all, on 1913, which deals with the space over the garage. Written up for you. <laughs> you want to take a shot at that one? Are you ready? Yet? Oh, so, <laughs> yeah. with the fire or something. Right. <laughs> so I'll start with a modification one. Uh, uh, over, over the garage. Yes. The new templates. Yeah. I move to grant the um, petitioners, uh, let's see, Wade and Lorraine Willworth a special permit under sections 7.3.2 to convert a storage space above the garage. Um, to the existing single-family dwelling located at 26 Green Street, as shown on the certified plot plan prepared and stamped by Edward Farrell, uh, dated May 4th, 2011, and as depicted on the architectural sheets. Uh, See, prepared by Phoenix Collaborative Architects of Wakefield, Massachusetts, um, stamped by Peter Sanderos, sheets four, two, and five. Um, and we're going to have the conditions to this as well, the standard conditions? Yeah. Okay, and the special permit is subject to the following standard conditions. The petitioners shall submit to the building inspector a certified plot plan of the proposed construction and well, we won't be no doing foundation, foundation plan, so that's out, yeah. Um, so basically, it's I think what he's looking for is just a uh, as-built plans before the occupancy permit. So that'd be the, yeah, so that would be the third. The as-built plan showing the completed construction shall be submitted to the building inspector immediately after the work is completed and prior to the issuance of an occupancy permit. Okay. And then, uh, if you remember, John noted, that was when Brad mentioned a uh, possible condition that it remain a two-family dwelling. Okay. Um, so then the second condition being that the property has to remain a two-family dwelling. What, the right plane? The right plane. I don't have the latest ones. There you do. Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. The architectural plans. Yes, yeah. 92. Yeah. 1219. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did you represent the plot plan? Yeah. The plot plan, the architectural plan. He did the plot plan. That's. <clears throat> I am doing Farrell. Yeah. Now, now, are we granting a special permit or are we modifying the existing special permit? So with this one, uh, a yeah, motion to modify the special yep. permit. Okay. They're not to include a master bedroom, but a... So that's, yeah, that, that's did what the 13 is, a modification did of the... Did you include the... Uh, I did not include the master bedroom. No, did you include the condition that... 
Yep. Be, yeah, be retained as a two family house. Right. 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 Two right. 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 That's, that's what I thought. So we're reading from the, the latest, but it actually is not what we want to do. So it's been modified since the legal ad, yes. I wouldn't go based on the legal ad. Yeah. So I didn't include right. the bedroom or the bathroom. Right. Motion. I would agree with that. So it would just be living space, mm -hmm. just generic living space. So we're just substituting in a uh, living space instead of master bedroom with three quarters bath, a yeah. living space to the existing single family dwelling. Uh, living space, we're calling it. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't see a, a set of drawings in this plan. Most likely in the 19-20 folder. Yeah. Most likely in the 19-20 folder. Oh, could be. Could be. Discussion on the deck issue. Contain a motion on the deck. Bob, you want to try another one? Sure. We'll do, we'll do that one. Uh, I'll, make, I'll make a motion uh, <coughs> that the, uh, we approve the application of Wade and Marie, Maureen. Woolworth uh, for special permit under Reading and Zoning Bylaw 7.3.2 to enclose the exi existing second story deck at their property located at 28 Green Street, Green, Massachusetts. 26. And it shall be in general conformance with the Architectural plans submitted with the application. Uh, those application plans prepared by Phoenix Collaborative Architects, Wakefield, Mass., uh, stamped by Peter Sandorsi. Uh, yep, on that. And dated. Uh, Nine two nineteen. Uh, sheets four. Uh, sheets four. It looks like they're out of water. I have. I have four, two, and five so I have for the four. sheets. Yeah. Okay. So we'll make reference to, and it's indicated on those sheets. Uh, we used to call it uh, with clouding around the area to be. Uh, uh, enclosed. There's no architectural plan, so all it is is a, a rendering of what it's is a rendering from the outside. Elevation showing it, it's an elevation, and uh, so I guess that would come later when they go plans. to mark and get the building done. Yeah. Uh, there was a rendering presented tonight, you might want to say. What is it? <laughs> One of these we did get tonight. Put it in somewhere, maybe one of my reference to it here. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no the, the, this the showed the existing one. one. I'm sorry. Right. That's what I was thinking of the existing. It doesn't show the proposed there. Right. 
But okay, no, just yeah, in general conformance with the architecture <coughs> plans. So, so no. Second on that. Are we? Pre-season boards versus residents. Uh, <laughs> there is more detrimental. I, you know, oh, I, I don't. Think oh, that's a the big board. issue. Yeah. Uh, yeah, really. You know, I can, I can see them at this point. You know, you know, two years, five years down the line, saying, you know, I'd like to heat this or something. Let's put some wiring in here, right. put some electric heat in or something. Our backyard. That's where we have, uh, so we don't want to get it. You know, it's, I, I don't know if they'd even be back here before the board if they came to the building inspector to do that uh, four or five years down the road, unless we put a condition in. So, <laughs> so if, they're, if, they're, if they're sitting out there one night and a neighbor complains because they plugged in a portable electric heater, am I going to go get them? Yeah, I don't. I don't think so. No, I don't. <laughs> Only if they blew the, the, the lines. <laughs> the connecting homes. <laughs> So, no, I, I, I don't think I need to uh, it was discussed. It was yeah, put a condition sure. on that, noting that. Did I hear a second? I'll second. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, we'll second, second. All in favor? I want to say four what and a half. What the heck? Those are the five. What the heck? God, that was so hard to get your arm up, John. <laughs> it is. <laughs> okay, let me step Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Sit very nice. Andrew, I want to thank you for answering all my emails, Absolutely. taking all my phone course, calls, giving me all that information. <laughs> you were fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Good night, guys. Are you going to give them plans? Yeah, and Brad, Brad, I'm going to give you a copy of them. Do you want stamp plans? I keep forgetting one already. You know what one, though. Okay, write this one. Yeah, I did that. Yeah, I keep yeah. edging that over the side. <laughs> Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay, I will write that. What if you missed already? I'm I have to get up in seven hours. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. You can leave. And I'm not even... Hey, so do I. ...of an older age. <laughs> oh, well, that's no, a I shot, didn't, I didn't specify anybody at all. Talking about me. <laughs> yeah, but you were looking. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I think the, I think the term is retiring age. <laughs> what you were looking yeah. for. That came in with two. <laughs> Frick impression. Who's this? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. You got him. Yeah. <laughs> you got him. <laughs> All right, we have a couple of sets of minutes, which we received two weeks ago. All reviewed them by the So that's there. I did First provide one. you guys copies again tonight. Just First one was 9 yeah. 7. Yeah, them. <laughs> I wouldn't blame you. So, so if everybody's our, our, excuse me, 9 4. The opportunity to room before tonight? Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, so we can get right at it? Yep. Okay. So we're doing 9 4 and 9 18. Got it. Yep. 9 4 and 9 18, yes. I are away. Okay. And then let's start with 9 4. Uh, Couple on page four, Andrew. 
uh, one, two, third paragraph down. Ms. Pluid requested a variance to the next available hearing. I think that's a continuance. It should be a continuance to the next available. And then the next to the last paragraph, starting with Attorney Josh Latham, was mm -hmm. present on behalf of the application. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it probably would be better applicant. Applicant, yeah. yeah. And then in the middle of that paragraph, the lot is split zone between the apartment A40. Isn't it just A40? It isn't called apartment A40, is it? Yeah, you're correct. The A is for apartment. <laughs> yeah. In the, oh, the, yeah, in the other business, so last page, page seven, uh, other business, last paragraph, uh, I think this is Hillary mentioned in there, and I just, I don't want to put words in your mouth, Hillary, but I, I just thought the way it was written up there was a little, confusing yeah. and I said uh, uh, parent teacher conference at the schools well, they took this, out were held today well it's but, the school open houses were held during concurrent to the time of the meeting right so, so if, if you wanted to that do was, some of that it, it yes. sounded confusing to me anyway but yes. uh, and yeah. it's something to keep yeah. Yeah. that's that's all I had on that Month. So, yeah, you could take out more homes. Yeah, yeah. The only other one I have significance is on page six. Uh, one, two, three, fourth paragraph down, last sentence. Says, Mr. Latham requested a brief reset. I think he meant recess. There were, there were some grammatical yeah, ones in here for commas and stuff right. like that, but I, I yeah. you can you right you can spell check and it'll pick up all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other comments, from anybody? No. Motion to accept the minutes of nine four as amended. So moved. I'll second. Hey. I'm good at the seconds. <laughs> all in favor? Five zero zero. Okay. Let's move on to number nine eighteen. Let's First sentence, or excuse me, first paragraph, second sentence. He asked if Mr. Dupel, he asked Mr. Dupel if the, is the previous deck was permitted. I think it means if. Yep. It should be if. The previous yes. deck was permitted. Mm -hmm. Yes. And. Uh, on page four, uh, going down one, one, two, three, four, five up from the bottom, Mr. Redfern found the project not being substantially any more detrimental to the neighborhood. If we can put it. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, and that's all I have there. I saw one down at the bottom of page two. Okay. Not the last sentence, but the paragraph right above it, the mm -hmm. third uh, third line from the bottom. It says, "Stated he will abide them." I would say, "Abide by them." Missing the word by. B Which paragraph is that in the big one it's at the, the bottom? It's the last major paragraph on that page. Third line from the bottom. See where oh, it okay. says, "And stated he will abide them." He will abide by them. By them. Okay. Right. It's the only one. Okay. 
top of my head. But... Although the other one on page five there, at the end of the other business section. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The board reviewed issues surrounding members missing meetings and what Mullen rule forms would need to be signed. I would change maybe the what to that. That, that Mullen rules must be signed. Yeah, that's the. Maybe agree. Yeah. Just take that positive. Yeah. The minutes of uh, September 19th as modified. So mm -hmm. moved. Mm -hmm. I'll second. I would for Hillary to respond. Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, definitely. I'll second. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Five zero zero. Okay, good. Uh, the only other thing I wanted to bring up is that uh, we've been experiencing a lot of continuations lately. Continuations upon continuations. Some of them may be very well justified. But we're getting requests for continuations by emails, memos. I just, I just want to throw out a comment for discussion. If, if people come in and want, and want a continuance, it would be wrong to say to me, have them come to the meeting and request a continuance. I can certainly have some more why, detail. Maybe in, not the first one, but after several. Uh, you know, I, I, don't know. I could agree to that. I get frustrated when I see it. Okay, we're having a third continuance. A third right. Continuance. Just a lot of time we continuances don't know why are because they can't make the meeting. So then to ask them to come and, and explain would, why they can't make the meeting. But, <laughs> Uh, model for sales I mean, they're working the problem. That's right. Like, very, it, it's justifiable. But I can certainly ask for more detail in continuance requests or ask and more why. Give us, give us a reason. Yeah, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. so, yep. So I can certainly do that. Continuous, mm -hmm. so we don't know what's going on. Yeah. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And if it is multiple, I would agree that they should come in and explain where they are in the them process. To come in tonight. And, okay. Yep. That's why they're here. So. <clears throat> Um, well, it's, it's the uh, con it's the additional continuances when they go three and four and five and nothing gets done, <clears throat> and that's what's hard to justify, especially when you're looking for input into into um, validity of the continuance, which would impact what the <coughs> person is asking for. If there's a legitimate reason, they come to staff and staff says, "Okay, you need this, that, and the other thing." You're not going to get it by the time that we have the meeting, and that has been put in there, and, and either staff or somebody uh, who's asking for the continuance be able to justify that. I think, especially again on the cards, I've always tried to put on the cards why we continue the thing, so that if anybody asks, we can tell them exactly why. I, I just think it's I think it's respectful to the board. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, there are mutual agreements, continuances, so you have every right to know why. Let's we'll see if we can just get them when they ask for a continuance to just put any reason when they request for right. why they're asking. Yes, yeah, so I can do that. See how that works. Yep. yep. Rather than say, hey, you're going to show up at every meeting. You know, maybe, right. that's, maybe that's next action way down the road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Um, and then you'll see that I gave you under other business the 2020 ZBA filing schedule. It has your meeting dates on the left. Please review it and let me know that they all work from you. I'd implore that you all put them in your calendar. Um, We're not looking. They're all the first and third Wednesdays. Yes. That's where they're supposed yep. to be. Yep. Um, I just want to speak sure that. It's been some yeah. active yeah. members every now and then and I would just like to stress that this is a commitment and there are statutory requirements for this board on voting members and attendance and more so to 
just everyone, everything has been fine, but um, just keep in mind that this is quite a commitment. <clears throat> but just let me know if there's any issues with that. You really only have to look at the meeting dates. The rest is for staff and applicants. Subject matter that people want to bring up. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn this meeting. So moved. I'll second it. <laughs> I was going to say, why don't we have Hillary make the motion? Uh, that would be a good one. Yeah. Next yeah. time, I'll do it. Okay. okay. All right. Cool. <laughs> Sounds good. Go ahead. All in favor? Nine zero zero. Okay. Nine thirty. Nine thirty on the dot. Mm -hmm. That's not bad with all this. Uh, <laughs> could have been worse. Yeah. <laughs>